That does sound nice. Yeah. It's got a snarl. Whoa. That sounds so much better than stock. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. I'm here with Mike here, and uh, we're, we are driving his 2003 BMW 540i M Sport with the six speed. It's the same exact car I have, but this will be the very first one of these cars I've driven with a uh, six speed besides my own. So I've had my car about a year and three months now, and I've always been curious how it's stacked up to other examples. There's only been about 1,265 of them made with the six speed for the US. So it's a pretty rare car. So it's actually funny. Um, the way I met Mike was I was uh, on my way home from work one day and I stopped by Chipotle and uh, I was walking back to my car with my food and all of a sudden I hear, hey, are you Zygreen? And I turn around and it's this guy right here. And then we start talking and he says like, yeah, he's been watching my channel for a while because of the fact that I bought the, the 540i. Just happens to be another local Bay Area um, E39 owner. And I said, yeah, let's sync up and like do some videos on um, our cars. Tell me a little bit about your car. I see you have 152,000 miles. When did you get it? Why did you get it? And what do you use it for? So I bought this car in July 2017. It's actually my second 2003 M Sport. I looked long enough for a manual and I finally found this one. This one is a slate green metallic with a black interior. I love the color. Yeah, it's actually one of four in that color combination. Really? Wow. Put some money into it right away and ever since then it's been solid. So you had about a year and a half? A year and a half. So let me ask you this, 152,000 miles. Mine has 127. I've driven my car about 15,000 miles and it's given me quite a few issues in like the year and three months that I've owned it. Like how much have you spent, would you say, on maintenance and, and just overall repairs? It's quite a lot. Uh, I know when I bought the car, I put around 2,000 into it. So okay. the oil leaks, the misfire, the thermostat, Recently, I've had my water pump go out. Okay. Um, that was like another 700-ish. Okay. Yeah, it, it does add up, but you have to figure you're not going to do the same repairs again right. for a long time. What I find is with these cars, they're so over-engineered in terms of just how all the parts fit together and like what, in order to access one thing, you'll have to go through like 10, 20 steps taking up taking off other parts just to reach that one thing because I don't do my own work on on my 5 series the labor cost ends up being astronomical I've had a few issues that are like minor but like yeah again like you said the way the cars put together it's just complex and it's yeah. like oh, like over engineered right right the way I like describing these cars to people is they drive so amazingly well for what it is for you know a 3800 pound family sedan incredibly refined comfortable lots of torque you know really good handling considering the weight everything's just fantastic when they work yeah but half the time you got you know christmas tree lights on here now my ac is blowing different temperatures out of the left and right oh really i can never drive that car in complete peace free, yeah. you know Okay, so let's talk about some of the differences between your car and my car, because um, my car used to just be completely bone stock. Your car has quite a few more mods, so run me through that list real quick. I lowered it on H&R springs, muffler and resonator delete, Okay. and in place I have a super sprint resonator delete pipe. I went with the E39 M5 clutch. Okay. Just to have a beefier one. Interior, I've put in a Dynavin N7 head unit. Okay. I uh, really like that. It looks very, like, stock. It looks OEM, yeah. So it offers the Bluetooth connectivity and everything. Also, crucially, you have the sport seats. Yes. Um, I had the optional comfort seats on yeah. my car. These seats actually give you a little bit more side to side support yeah um, whereas the comfort seats it gives you a little bit more adjustability in terms of the different things you can adjust like there's lumbar support and, and so forth now that we've got a nice stretch of straight away let's see how this thing pulls and, and sounds whoa that sounds so much better than stock yeah when you really get on it man yeah. it sounds great it has a little it has a little grasp to it Wow, that sounds almost like an M5. It's close. I like it. Let's just say that. Oh man, that completely changes the experience of driving it. Just hearing that that V8 burble. 
<laughs> I feel like I'm driving an M5 <laughs> with just less power. Yeah. Honestly, that's just, that's the experience I'm getting right now. Whereas when I drive my car, I feel like I'm driving a 540i because of the sound. It's very muted. There is a little bit of drone, drone. isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Well, around like 1500, 2000. Yes. That just gives you more reason to keep the RPMs higher, huh? <laughs> yeah. So in terms of the way it handles, so you've got the H&R lowering springs on stock shocks. Mm -hmm. I've got the Coney Yellow shocks on stock That's springs. Uh, I like yours better. Yeah. So I went with the Coney Yellows, had them installed. The ride quality was significantly worse, I would say. Um, at high speed, it, it felt about the same as stock, but at low speed, going over the bumps, you just didn't get the same level of compliance. With this car, because you still have the original shocks, it just has more of that squishy pillow feeling to mm -hmm. it, which is what you want in a car like yeah. this. The way I, I describe most BMW performance cars, your normal M cars and M Sport BMWs have, the, the way they drive overall, not just the handling, but also the way they steer, the way they shift, it's always got that little bit of soft pillowiness to it. And the reason I like that is because it, it responds to you as a driver. Like when you turn the steering wheel, the car doesn't just turn in immediately. It, there's a little bit of a delay, but you feel it because the suspension kind of, you know, it's a little bit softer, it moves around. When you brake really hard, you feel the nose dive a little bit. When you accelerate really hard, you feel it kind of, you know, um, lean back a little bit. It just feels like you're driving an actual car that's meant for the street. Um, that's the best way I can describe it, and that's why I actually really love driving BMW performance cars. Like the M2 and the 1M that I compared a couple months ago, that's exactly how I would describe those cars as well. Let's do a little, one more pull up here. <laughs> oh, that's such a good sound. Puts a smile on my face from the passenger seat. Hell yeah. Now you're making me reconsider uh, selling my car. car. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the all-important question when it comes to 540i maintenance, timing chain guides. What's your experience with that? Because you're at the mileage where most internet experts would say you got to do it. Yeah, so I had the fear of having it done or wanting to have it done at about 150000 Uh huh. Then my water pump went out, so I had my mechanics drop the lower pan to okay. inspect for the plastic. The little rubbish. chunks of plastic, yeah. Yeah, they told me that it was clean. They think my car can make it to about 180 okay. before needing it. Okay. Um, also, the sound is not bad on a cold start or the ticking sound. Every thousand miles that I drive, I'll set aside some and I'll have it done eventually. <laughs> nice, all right. Yeah. So you, you said 180,000 so that you, you plan to keep this car, I guess, more long term then? Forever. Forever? Yes. You love it that much, This huh? has been my dream car since I was a child. Okay. Um, having a rare color. Just and, adds to it. Yeah. For sure. I know there's the M5 and eventually maybe I'll, I'll own one, but this car this car means a lot. You know, 99% of car, car guys out there will tell you like the M5 is, is the mm -hmm. ultimate BMW sedan. But I kind of agree with you in some ways that the 540i M Sport kind of like, it kind of holds a special place in my heart because it's a little bit more subtle than, than the M5. Like the M5, everyone knows that's an M5. It's got the big ass M badges on it. It's got the quad pipe exhaust. You know, it's it's loud from, from the factory. Um, whereas this car, when you look at it, it just kind of, it looks just like just a normal five series. But it's got the V8, it's got the six speed and you know, yeah. It's just a little bit more of a daily, friendly, and more stealthy looking car. They it, always would say, sorry, they always say that this is the poor man's M5. Yeah. Um, the fact that in 03 they made the M Sports to have some of the M5 parts. Right. And that they didn't build so many, it kind of made me like the 03. Right, right, because they only made 1265 of these with the 6 speed, and the M5, I don't know the exact number, but it's, I, I know it's several times more. Yeah. That being said, I did drive an M5 once, and it's a, such a good car. Like The balance of power to weight is, yeah. is where you, you really feel it, the difference. The other thing is, 
these cars don't have a, a limited Limit slip, slip diff, which... A lot of people do the swap, yeah. and that is one thing on my list. Okay, I said this car drives very well, but an LSD would make the car drive borderline, like, perfect. Because um, the gear ratio is also different. Right, um, yeah, a little bit shorter, funny, right? with the automatic 540i M Sports, they put a 3.15 final Oh, that's ratio. right, yeah. This has a 2.81. Mm -hmm. So getting the M5 LSD would increase it to 3.15. Okay. Kind of give you that right gear ratio that yeah. you'd want in this car. It's a little bit long right now. You know, we're, we're driving with traction control on. I Coming see. out of those corners, it's just cutting in because it's just I trying saw. to spin the inside yeah. wheel so much. I saw a flicker on there. Yeah. So to make this car perfect, it's funny because I've, I've thought about this in my own head a lot of times. Like, what would I really want from this car to make it drive exactly how I want? And the answer to that question so far has been another 100 to 150 horsepower, higher red line, more power at the top end, and then an LSD. And guess what? That's exactly what the M5 is. <laughs> when I put it that way, it's like, well, maybe maybe the M5 is the one to have. But I like the look of this car. It's just more subtle. And it feels, you feel more like you have something that people don't know about. Whereas with the M5, everyone knows you're driving an M5. That was super fun, actually. It was really interesting driving for the first time another car um, like mine. I, I always thought mine, my car was just such like a rare thing. There's no way I'd ever find someone with another one. And then sure enough, you know, at the Chipotle, that fateful day, um, you hit me up. So thanks, Mike. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having uh, me. This kind of, I can't believe I'm saying this because I've been talking lately on some of my recent videos about how I'm considering like selling this thing and you know, moving on to the next thing, but driving this one kind of like reinvigor reinvigorated some of my appreciation for the for the M Sport. Cool. So I'm glad. <laughs> we'll see what happens. No promises. I, I'm constantly going through like next car ideas in my mind. But um, anyways, thanks guys for watching. Um, stay tuned and see you next time.